Hi there, let me take you on a journey with me. My name is Dennis and in July of this year I cycled across Germany from Berlin to Switzerland. I could not put my conscience to rest at the thought of a three week long vacation without adding at least a little bit of suffering to it. So this is what I did. I wanted to have a story to tell. I hope that I can motivate someone out there to pursue their ideal version of themselves. If I can do it, then you can do it. But enough talking, let's hit the road. left Berlin. I'm 13 kilometers in. Uh, it's 2.13, 2.30 p.m. right now so <laughs> I already did the first mistake and started the journey rather late. Um, been now on the bike since about 40 minutes and the plan is to make it to Leipzig, my first destination for the day my first day basically uh, it's about 160 kilometers it's uh, I think probably the longest day which I will do because it's mostly flat flat land and um, yeah let's see how the next days go and uh, <laughs> let's see if I can make it Thirty kilometers in, made it to Potsdam, about 130 more to go. It's a beautiful city, I think that's a museum behind me, open space, beautiful weather, let's hope it stays this way. kilometers in and man the heat and the weight of all the gear I have with me it's quite it's quite something Finally made it to Leipzig. Took me about seven and a half hours, 23 kilometers per hour. Actually, I don't know where I will spend the night tomorrow. It's like <laughs> spontaneous trip, I guess, not that very well planned. Let's hope I don't have to use the sleeping bag. The second day, made it to Leipzig yesterday. And man, I really overshoot it yesterday with 170k. So today it will be 100 kilometers to Weimar. Two bottles filled with delicious juice and uh, just a bottle of water, a bottle of water for the uh, dental hygiene. Actually, what I forgot yesterday because I just was so tired, like it was just perfect, no headwind at all. Uh, fortunately, I got a little bit sunburned, so today I will use sunscreen. <laughs> Should have used it yesterday. Will be some climbs today, so uh, let's see how I manage after yesterday's ride. When I was studying at university, I was not living a life aligned with my ideals across all dimensions. One of the dimensions which I missed out on was health or rather working out. So that is what I made my number one priority this year. I said to myself that I wanted to cycle 10,000 kilometers this year, which in part was motivation for this journey. And the only question is though, will my legs hold also or will they pop? No climbing without any gear and being uh, normal body shape I guess it's all right it's still it's still painful but at least you're making progress and as you can see me right now I'm pushing around 260 watts and only going 10 k's an hour so if this would continue and then 8% uh, uh, what do you call it gradient then we would be talking about six more hours but fortunately this one was only a few hundred meters so it's over now but 
I still have 60 more kilometers to go. Uh, I'm not a prophet, but I would say that things will get rough. Got the first flat tire, motivation is still up high, it could be worse, I got a nice shady place, uh, got some spare tubes, always get uh, some, also can recommend, you know, take some gloves with you, just so your hands won't get dirty, just makes the ride more fun, these little things help quite a lot, I guess. In the end it took me 108 kilometers and uh, oh, what does it say yeah about five hours and 11 minutes I, I average about um, hope you can see it 170 watts so basically I started bonked out with uh, with the first 30k doing only like 145 watts maybe it was because of the heat uh, but in the end it picked up because of uh, like going up and down continuously so um, I, I managed basically to get a hang of it now I'm in this Airbnb which I booked like yesterday night basically so I'm very happy it worked out it's uh, really nice I got a self check-in with the key box outside so by the way check out this nice clock here the reason why uh, I chose like uh, a night to stay for like 100 euros it's it's a bit on the upper side for me i guess is because of the flexibility i booked it like yesterday night you know and i i, I can't say uh, yeah sure just pay 50 50 euros less if you ride 50 kilometers more but <laughs> yeah <laughs> okay sure uh, sure if you like an uh, athlete you can do that Definitely not for me, you know, to like <laughs> being out the first day 170k. Uh, today I did like almost 110k. I, I trained for this event, quote unquote, of this journey. Um, and, and I'm happy basically that <laughs> honestly, only, only my training is carrying me, he, me here in the good weather. Like, if it would be raining, if I would have had headwind, you know. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I probably would have been in the train already so all right um, that's it for the day um, I, I don't know how uh, I, I don't know actually where I will sleep tomorrow I still have to book the thing and uh, yeah I need to closely listen to my body and find out basically uh, how much I can push myself tomorrow and uh, hopefully I can find a place to stay which meets the conditions of my body basically. Today's effort will be around 70 kilometers but it's like 99% uphill so it will take at least as long as yesterday so I'd assume around five and a half hours I'm about to start the climb, 50 kilometers in. 
basically need to go up there I guess somewhere we'll be almost at 900 meters and then also a descent afterwards yeah was averaging until now 186 watts so that's pretty good uh, good in time only two and a half hours in so far so going pretty good and let's see what the climb will be like made it to the top now it's only downhill into the town and yeah I'm glad that I made it safely and yeah it was it was tough but surprisingly enough I am feeling quite well averaged around 200 watts so yeah it was a good day <laughs> Right, finally made it. This is the place I'm gonna uh, go to sleep. How much space I have? It's basically none. Compared with yesterday's days or yesterday's, uh, actually even uh, two days mornings, Airbnb at Weimar, uh, this is a drastic change. Today's stats, I did like um, four hours, 70 minutes, 80 kilometers, and averaged in about 190 watts. So this is quite good. My elevation gain today, yeah, 1000 meters up, almost 900 meters down. I, I wouldn't be too bumped out if I, if I decide not to like cross the Alps, you know, like one of these things I always wanted to do. But, but uh, come on, like, I guess maybe I can try and if I fail, I can just roll back down so at least it will be a descent yeah okay rambling around at this point so see you tomorrow so good morning at least for me it's a morning um, it's been raining and now the mission is to escape the rain about 130 kilometers ahead at least mostly downhill but also some climbs check out my setup still got a pizza from yesterday which i need to eat <laughs> before the rain basically <laughs> destroys the cupboard. Um, put some valuable stuff in my zippy bag inside. Yeah, so won't be filming too much today because uh, at least Komoot says it's about six and a half hours. So I would assume at least like seven hours with the current conditions. So seven hours on a saddle, it's gonna be a pain. Uh, yeah, so don't have that much time to film but at least wanted to share the beginning of the day with you without further ado let's escape the rain quick update so 30 minutes in still raining uh, shoes are completely <laughs> wet and I just hope that it stops raining soon so um, yeah I can dry out a little bit through the wind 
and uh, yeah take it up a notch because right now my speed is not that great I yeah the you know slow and steady wins the race I don't want to I don't want to risk a crash I still have lots of days ahead to enjoy so yeah maybe if this will be like an eight hour day who cares uh, better better safe than sorry I guess yeah so always drive responsibly take your time you know take your time it's not a race k in and yeah amazingly luckily i have seemed to found the only sunny place right now up in the sky we got this blue pocket and basically all around myself are only clouds especially thick clouds in that direction and that's where i came from today so 80k more to go uh, until uh, Würzburg and then I can finally call it a day maybe some of my stuff will dry out my shoes are definitely completely soaked and I'm glad that the next Airbnb I will be staying in it will have a washing machine so I can properly wash all clothes uh, especially after today's ride I even had to Komoot send me through like a uh, through some crossroads so bike and clothes are especially dirty so uh, look, looking forward to arriving at uh, Würzburg. way to Würzburg I cycled through Schweinfurt. I would have loved to meet a person there which inspired me a few years ago to pursue my ideals but unfortunately this one did not work out. Talk about living in the moment. After a few hours I finally made it to Würzburg where a nice Airbnb above the owner's restaurant was waiting for me. I enjoyed a nice meal with potatoes and vegetables. After that I explored the city and was just awestruck by its beauty. It was by far one of the most beautiful places on my journey. The old city with the iconic classic European German architecture was a sight to behold. The next day I continued my journey to Heilbronn. fifth day of my voyage I crossed the border between the iconic state of Bavaria into the northern part of Baden-Württemberg, another state of Germany. As you can see the day was pretty wild with some steep climbs and descents. You don't see it in the video but this was one of the most stressful days in terms of traffic as my route was pretty much going along the autobahn. About 60k more to go to Heilbronn. Been doing some sightseeing today in Würzburg so uh, yeah start a little bit later today. Also, by the way, I cleaned this bike um, after yesterday's rainy day. It catched a lot of mud, a lot of dirt and unfortunately on a nice white bike like that one, uh, you can still see uh, here and there. <laughs> Didn't manage to uh, get most of it out properly, but it will do for now, it will do. 60 more case to go. I'm gonna make my way to Heilbronn without further ado um, because I want to arrive there early, I hope at 7, so uh, I can make it to some grocery stores to pick up some food. So, catch you later.
Airbnb in Hebron was pretty good and after buying some food I had a day to explore the city. I was happy that in contrast to Würzburg and Bavaria, the grocery stores still had open after 8 pm here, which is definitely something you need to consider in Germany. Each state and city can be different in that regard. The city itself was very clean compared to what I am used to see in Berlin and I just enjoyed strolling around and getting lost in the streets on a hot summer day. As a software engineer this journey is the exact opposite of what I do most of the time, which is sitting at the desk all day, basically. So I made it out of Heilbronn, now it's about 100 kilometers to a small village at the Black Forest. Uh, it's a little bit cloudy but other than that the weather is pretty nice. So let's hope the day will be good without any flat tires. And so far the journey has been pretty great. Mm, about two flat tires, a rainy day, uh, no issues with booking, hostel or Airbnb whatsoever. So, so far so good. Catch you later. And so I continued cycling from Heilbronn towards my next destination. Right now it's November and I clocked in about 6000 kilometers of cycling, so I won't make my ambitious goal of 10,000 kilometers this year, but it's not what it's about. At the end of the day it's about showing up. If I actually make another 1000 kilometers this year, I would have achieved 70% of my goal, which is still better than doing nothing, right? Alright, finally arrived at my destination in Eisenthal at Bühl around the uh, Black Forest and check that out. Got a nice bed, ATV, there's my bike. <laughs> Do some laundry with the washing machine, take a nice shower. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm really happy that everything so far has worked out. Look at that, got a nice kitchen, ready. Took care of the food situation because on Sundays in Germany supermarkets are closed. Still got a banana from yesterday. Or oh, yeah, from Friday actually. <laughs> so gotta eat that one soon. Yeah, some spices, oh, some lovely coffee cups, some glasses. That's it for today. See you tomorrow. Second week, Monday, one ride away from Freiburg, 
100 kilometers ahead, around five hours, surrounded by beautiful vineyards in beautiful southwestern Baden-Württemberg, southwestern part of Germany. The uh, Black Forest, uh, let me get my angles right. There, the Black Forest, you can see it there. And yeah, and yeah, I don't know wh where we'll cycle next uh, from Freiburg, maybe the original plan was cycle through the Alps to Italy, but as there is a drought right now there, it will be over 40 degrees Celsius and I don't think I will be capable to take on that challenge. Never been through the Alps before, never been to Italy, so uh, yeah, I don't know if that would be mental to go there uh, or just like a death sentence, or a death wish basically. Uh, with my kind of um, equipment. I only have a sleeping bag, uh, not a bivy or a tent, uh, so yeah, not ideal conditions to, to get caught uh, blindsided in the Alps, I guess, while getting a heat stroke or whatever. So yeah, five hours today, catch you later. After around four and a half hours on the saddle, I finally made it to Freiburg where I spent a few days with Jonathan and Nicola, which I knew from my workplace. Thank you both so much for having me and showing me around. I very much appreciate your hospitality and also thank you for making this journey partially possible, I guess. I also used the days in Freiburg to prepare my bike for the Alps. I left it at the bike shop to adjust my gears, change the brake pads and to take an overall look at it, just to be safe. For my next trick, I'm gonna be going up some hills uh, in about 34 degrees Celsius in the heat of the sun. Put on my sunscreen. I hope it's enough. Let me turn the camera for you. I'm gonna be going up there, somewhere around there, in the hills of the Black Forest. And uh, as soon as I cross this Black Forest, it's gonna be, I believe, on the 40 more kilometers to the Swiss-German border. So, after around a one and a half long, week long journey, I will have cycled across Germany from Berlin, pretty much. And yeah, I will be pretty happy when I, when I cross this border, I can tell you that. So, Looking forward to that, to that. Without further ado, let me do some riding and uh, yeah, catch you later. Things get tough. I have around 600 meters of elevation ahead of me. Um, this is like the overall profile. So first I'm going up. I'm gonna stay on 800 meters above sea level and then we'll be going down again but yeah for now it will be painful climbing so see you later almost made it to the top but man the traffic here is crazy I cycle up all this here and now I hope I safely make it to the other side as you can see traffic here is crazy literally cars passing by like 20 every minute or so uh, pretty pretty intense 
but only honked once, only honked once, so still some road to go. what a ride so i made it actually to the border of switzerland but let me tell you it was so tiring i i barely made it like uh, it was so hot and felt like i constantly had to drink like i was just constantly thirsty and um, the problem was like the the, the drinks and the bottles were just like so warm, like I didn't want to drink, but I wanted to, you know what I mean? To make it out at 9 a.m. here, and then I probably will be riding like six hours, saying 100 kilometers, 130 kilometers um, to a small town, village, I don't know, uh, called Bad Ragas, in the south of Liechtenstein or St. Gallen, I believe. So yeah. That's where I'm heading and that's where I will be spending my weekend, hopefully, if everything goes well. And it was rough, like cars were constantly passing by and uh, making making basically the thing quite annoying because there wasn't a cycling, cycling lane and, you know, they are speeding up and I'm suffering up through. So uh, that was, yeah tiring physically but also mentally i guess and i just hope that the path i have uh, chosen or komoot has chosen for me for um yeah for the alps uh, will be better or at least a bit calm you know and the plan is if i fail if i don't finish the plan is to basically turn around reroute and tell the story as it went so as things worked out and yeah in the end everything will out will work out just right all right without further ado i'm just rambling around at this point and i'm hungry and i still haven't taken a shower yet so we'll do all that and see you tomorrow welcome to switzerland and what greets me here i don't know 10 percent climb whoa Switzerland is pretty chill. It looks exactly like Germany. Perfekt. Oh, sehr gut. Okay, vielen, gut, vielen Dank für die Info, ja. Sie sind sehr hilfreich. Dankeschön. Right, I think I'm like 
40, 50 kilometers in, haven't checked. Uh, but just as it so happens, right on my route, there's this nice well with water straight from the source up at the forest somewhere there. Lovely lady told me, so it's actually nice. Also gonna mix some of that water with uh, the leftover part of the Sprite here and continue my journey through Switzerland. 80 more to go. Alright, so finally made it to some valleys surrounded by hills and mountains. Um, yeah, pointing in that direction, I already see the start of the Alps. So, yeah, around 50 kilometers more to go. And Sunday, I will finally, for the first time in my life, try to climb the mountain, <laughs> try to climb the Alps. I actually can't believe it. So, yeah. Uh, it's a lovely weather, no wind, sunshine, so let's see if we make it in time and can find some delicious food for the weekend. Check this out. Uh, I've met Leon and Paul uh, on my journey here in Switzerland. We uh, coincidentally stumbled upon um, at this beautiful scenery. So, yeah. yeah it's uh, Leon, what, what, why are you here on the bike? Why, why are you torturing yourself like this? Well, <laughs> that I don't really know, to be honest. But we're going to be going to the Furka Joch tomorrow. And then uh, we're going to make our way back to Lake Constance. And then, yeah, we have about four and a half thousand meters of elevation to climb crazy well 350 kilometers it's a it's a lot of fun it's a nice tour and you said you started yesterday right yeah. no to this morning ah this morning actually yeah. yes so see what a nice coincidence right they this guy started like today and uh yeah just so happens uh they they caught me up in the traffic while i was figuring stuff out with uh with my supplies and now yeah it's like stuff like this you know during this uh bikepacking which makes things interesting you know getting to know other people their their stories their motivations actually they are not like me like hopping through different airbnbs you you guys are actually like uh, do some camping yeah right? we're gonna be wild camping, wild in camping. yeah did you do that already before in your yes, 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 yes. well we do we go hiking a lot in the mountains and then we oh, sleep yeah. in a tent or in hammocks too so it's just the same yeah. thing for bike so do you uh, maybe let's check out the setup quickly just uh, sure. people see what we are rocking so you know already my stuff so leon this is yours right yes yeah, so we have the so-called arsch rakete in the yeah, back the uh, <laughs> s rocket <laughs> in colloquial in plain well, terms here i got my phone i try to do everything with the bike computer but if you can look this is all i see and that's pretty it's yeah not it's, uh, you rock the minimalistic lifestyle not yeah. only in terms of sheltering but also in terms of navigation yeah technology. but uh yeah but you use komoot for for yes. route planning right everything with yeah so we've got a nice setup uh i guess uh, a nice line to cut through the wind uh, so yeah uh, do you know by chance uh, which cassette you do you have in the back oh, like, the, probably the Sora, Shimano Sora. Also, so it's it's very budget. Yeah, very yeah. Budget. I actually have the same gear set. Do you do you know? Did you fit in a higher than a 34 cassette by chance? I have never tried. Never tried. Okay, so well, I guess then you will be for some pain in these mountains, <laughs> in, as no, well as me, be right. <laughs> because at a at a certain at a certain. Um, 
what do you call it, is at a certain steep gradient, this gear set just is not enough, unfortunately, if you do all these, uh, yeah, if you pack so much gear, basically. So, uh, Paul, do you also want to share your setup? I know your English is not that great, but, <laughs> but let's check it out anyway. All right, uh, so. I have also the S-Rocket. Yeah. To be, uh, we actually have the same model, yeah, yes, nice. Yes, and there uh, are <laughs> uh, my sleep, uh, sleep thing. And That's pretty handy, right? Yes, uh, yes. Putting all your stuff up there, additional and, space. Uh, a baguette. Yeah. And yes, here are my some food. Here look. Some... Uh, yeah. Yes. And... And the front there uh, are... Lower, yeah. yeah. Always want to keep the uh, the light stuff at the front, right? So steering the bike yes. is easily and safe. Yeah. All right, thank you guys so much for sharing your stuff, sharing your journey. Um, we don't know how much views this will get. Maybe there's is some inspiration for someone out there to go out there and train, or yeah, do 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 some fun, do some adventure, meet some new people, and yeah, ride on. cycling together for quite some time and had some nice conversations, but it came the point where it was time to part ways as the guys were headed to Austria. It's been about four months since my journey where I have been working on this project besides my full-time job in cycling. I hope you are doing alright Leon and Paul wherever you are. Thank you so much for being part of this journey. The day was coming to an end and so I spent the next day in Bad Ragaz to get some rest. The city in itself was not special at all, but as you can see, it is surrounded by mountains and so I decided to go hiking. At the beginning of my journey I had no idea how things would end up, if I would even find places to sleep or the motivation to constantly worry about filming, knowing fully well how much work it would be to put it all together. I only knew that I wanted to make it to Italy and cross the Alps. So I decided to book my first night in an Airbnb and that was basically all my initial planning. Looking back I consider myself really blessed that everything worked out just right. What's up? I made it to Hur, the last destination in Switzerland, about 20k in so far. Now checked into the last place where I will be staying in. As you can see, I got a nice bed, some weird, uh, yeah, sink, uh, I don't know, sink bathroom constellation here in this corner. The plan is today to get some training in, at least attempt an Alpine pass. So. Maybe I can do like 2000 meters of climbing, finishing with a bang, so to say, uh, where it gets challenging, you know, I decided to quit just because um, Switzerland is quite heavy on the wallet, let's put it that way. <laughs> and also two reasons or two vegan excuses why I want to quit, uh, I guess like mentally and physically, 
I still would be totally able to do it, but it's just like, yeah, <laughs> Some, somehow I just now lost, um, lost the drive, so to say. I'm happy we made, we achieved at least over 50%. Uh, it's 1000 kilometers at least, which uh, I've cycled. I have cycled across Germany, I made it to another country, uh, made some nice scenery, made it, I don't know, like 5000 meters of elevation. So as someone who only is like used to flatlands, which is great. Uh, yeah, this is, this is great. So, so yeah, see you on the road because today will be a bang. Today will be the ride. Today will be potentially the most challenging ride of my life. <laughs> Let's put it this way. The first time in my life to climb the Alps. Oh God, almost crashing. <laughs> and we have a minor 10% elevation here. My power meter, 12%. My power meter is hilariously wrong showing only 330 watts i don't know it's messed up maybe need a new one definitely pushing like 400 at least here and man it's like i'm only only barely two kilometers in let me switch the hand only two kilometers in and michael said it's not made for this type of terrain. It's definitely not made. A 34 cassette crossing the Alps with a 34 cassette. Why am I doing this? I don't know. Not because I have to, but because I can. And yeah, that's the view ahead of me. So at least 1,900 more meters in elevation to go. Made 500 meters already, 25% I guess, let's go. And look what I found, like at this random wall uh, on this road, on this pass, just a nice beautiful fountain full of fresh mountain water. So my bottles are both empty, so this is the perfect timing. So I made it to the top of the first climb, around 1000 meters of elevation and would like to do 1000 more. Want to backtrack uh, latest at 8 p.m. So I have around two more hours to go, but there's a descent in between, so will be a bit tough on with the time but yeah let's let's see how much i can do uh, i don't want to uh, descend in the dark so that's why i will head back early and also i need to wake up early tomorrow to catch the bus so it's pretty exhausting like <laughs> my voice is already tense of all the heavy breathing uh, because of the steep uh, elevation and because yeah I don't have the appropriate cassette for the mountains. So yeah, let's see how far I can go.
right, that's it. This is it. Climbed 1,800 meters back down and will be another climb so it will be around 2400 i guess this is where i turn back basically and hopefully it won't get dark too soon yeah it's like 8 pm already what does it mean to believe in something if i believe in cycling am i actually doing it just because i like the tour de france do i like sports because i go to every match or isn't it rather that by acting it out I actually confess that I believe? The faith comes only alive if it is acted out. So this was my journey. A leap of faith. A statement that I do believe. That I am actually doing something to get closer towards my ideal. I reduced suffering through suffering. I will make an effort and continue to do so. Because the journey is not quite over yet. There are still so many things for me to do, which I know, and probably many more which I am not even aware of. I hope to share some of these with you in the future. So, wherever you are in your life, just know that it is not too late to get up and make an effort. If the dragon is too big, then go somewhere else and find a smaller dragon to slay. Wherever you are, just start moving towards the highest possible goal. Be willing to be the fool in the darkness. Be willing to stumble. Be willing to fall, but always get up. You will find your way eventually. You will become the hero on your journey. Thank you for watching. Now go out there and train.